G'day tubers and welcome back. So today what we're going to be doing is taking out these two Tesla batteries and seeing if we can revive them. It does seem that it was the most popular thing to do moving forward, seeing if we can get these batteries back. Now the first thing I've got to say is one, um, I've got enough experience with lithium to know it's a dangerous, uh, dangerous operation and I would recommend that nobody try this at home. I'm basically trying to do it to say, hey look it didn't work. And look, if it does work, I'll eat my words. We'll do that later. So let's get this battery out and take a look. Well, that process was very simple. So you've got a couple of bolt holes through the middle here. And literally that just sits across there like that. And sits on top of this little bit of plastic. And the same on the other side. You've just got these two little holders that sit on each side. And it lifted straight out. The water cooling loop to get these off. Press it down, pull it away. Done. So that was nice and easy. With the battery up on my bench, I've just got to take some of this Kapton tape off. So I can separate the two halves of the plastic shell so I can actually get to that Tesla BMS board there and replace it with a lithium power uh, external board so I can hook that up to my eye charger. There's a couple of small plastic tags at either end that just sort of hold it together. Like the bottom side's off. Now I've made sure I've got a fairly clean bench so I can turn that over but before I do that I'll grab the multimeter I think some of you are skeptical that this is a zero volt battery. You just go from cell to cell. We've got nothing there. We'll go all the way over the other side. Almost doesn't move the multimeter. Swap the polarity over. Almost nothing there. Got one of the banks down the back. Nothing there. Go to that one to that one. And nothing there. So you can see that the battery is absolutely zero volts. So we pop that other cover off. And do the same thing to this side. Almost nothing. Definitely nothing. From there to there. From there to there. What happens if I do an individual cell? Nothing. So still definitely nothing there at all. To take these boards off, there's a little tiny pin inside of the black plug there. Side cutters. There we go. So the pin just slips in there. Damaged the head a little bit, but I got it out. Now with the pins out, these little black plugs should pull out. It should, there we go. So that's the little plug there. And the pin slides into it. Now with the four pins removed, it's just a matter of popping the top off. You've got to be careful with this. I have seen quite a few of these cables actually broken and I've actually fixed quite a few of them in my workshop for customers. There you go, top one pops out. With this one here, it's a little temperature sensor. And as you can see, there's a little latch down here. So you press that down, lifts it over, and then you can pull that straight out. On the bottom side, you also have another one. So what I do at this point, so I usually sort of put that back up again, flip the module over, and then take it off from the other side. Uh, this is my little test rig that I plan to actually try and recover this battery with. Uh, just to let you know, it's not going to stay here. It, this is just the first little bit. I'll just do a couple of minutes worth of testing here so you can see the results of the shorter tests, and then we can do some longer tests. What have we got? iCharger X6, we've got the multimeter, and we've got a charger. Uh, so the eye charger will be so we can see all the cell voltages. So if we turn this on, so we've got one and a half amps and just a handful of volts. Now this is I think 22 volts. This is coming up to one volt. We haven't got any of the cell data yet because the cells aren't high enough. So as it comes up and charge a little bit, it should actually populate the cell voltages. Almost got two volts there. 
Again, this is a 22 volt battery or something nominal. Uh, so I, I've got no concerns with charging it this much on this bench at this time. Here we go. We've got a couple there populating. So 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a volt. We've got the first three, two more. One, one to go. Where are ya? There we go. We've got all six cells there. So what I'm finding is I've done another test. I've done another test about two weeks ago. I did six volts, one amp for two hours. And check this out. Yeah, it's a little bit hot. Um, now I did that down on the floor down there with the thermal camera on the whole time and I sat beside it for two full hours. Um, and the battery itself got quite hot even at such a small charging rate. Now what happens here is and why I don't think I'm going to be able to recover these batteries is I can turn up the voltage here. I'm just going to turn it all the way up. I'll just max it out. It's only 30 volts, if it could even do that high. So we've got one volt per cell on most of the cells. Now, if I turn this off, and bearing in mind, I've done this for two hours, but I don't want to leave it at that rate that high on here. You have a look at the actual, what have we got there? You watch that fall. Now, if I leave that long enough, uh, usually about three hours, I think. No, actually, I think 12 hours it took to do the other one with the two hour test. And it went back to exactly zero volts again. It is not holding a charge. So I could keep going with this test, and which I think I might do, I might try a couple of days at as low as I possibly can, but there you go, you can see they're all disappearing now. We're back down to 2.2 volts, and it's dropping fairly quickly. All right, there we go, we're under an hour, just under an hour since we were last in here, and the voltage is completely gone from that, and we're down to 0 0.06 volts. All right, in our backyard, sitting on an old trailer, so what I'm going to do now is we'll turn the voltage on and we'll just have a quick look. And the voltage is dropped to now 0.039 of a volt. So as I said, it's going to drop down. So we'll turn this on. We'll get the voltage sorted out. We might just set that to one volt for now. Come back after a few hours, see what it's done. There we go. So that seems like about the lowest I can actually get it. So we've got 1.6 volt across all six cells at half an amp. So that is a real trickle charge on each one of those cells. So we'll let that run for a few hours. We'll come back and have a look. One hour update on the low and slow. Still doing 0.41 amps. We've got nothing coming up there. Just over two and a half hours in. I brought the second battery out just so we got a like a, a benchmark for the temperature. So that's saying 32-ish degrees. This one, 35, 34. Now this one has been out here for an hour longer than this one, so they'll probably equalize after a while. And the wall's like 45 degrees up there. 50 degrees in the sun. Just over six hours in. We're still doing 0.42 amps. Just in case you're curious, this was to get the voltage up from zero volts. And once this comes up from zero volts, I'll get the eye charge to take over. I can do it at say um, one amp. I can set I can set the charger to one amp and then do that over time. But we still haven't got the readouts from the cells. So we still need a lot more voltage in there to do that. But I don't plan on turning that up until the 44 amps, no, 0.44 amps drops to zero. That will tell me that the battery is sitting at uh, 1.4 volts. And if it doesn't ever do that, it means the battery is not taking any energy in and it's just being dissipated at heat, as heat. This is the little Fleur thermal camera that I use that plugs into my iPhone. Works very well, a couple years old. I'll leave a link in the description below. Well, there we go. It's about 10 hours in. We've got 29 degrees on that one. And not much hotter on that one. Flick it back over to normal mode again. We've got 5.17 volt, 
and it's come down by 0 0.05 of a volt of, of an amp sorry so that amperage is coming down so i'm hoping that it's getting a little bit of current in there but we'll come back tomorrow morning and see what we've got the sun's just coming up the next day so we'll have a look i think at this point it's worth waiting another 24 hours and seeing how much more those amps drop and then see if it holds that one and a half volts we're a bit more than 30 hours in and the day's got a bit warmer for some unexplicable reason the amps has gone back up again i'm not sure what that would be maybe temperature difference i'm not sure but we'll continue to let it run and see what happens about 36 hours in still one and a half still doing four one i'll let it go for another 12 hours in the morning we'll come back to it and we'll turn this off and we'll see what the voltage is whether it stays or just drops to nothing again my vote is it drops to nothing let's find out well tubers i have to apologize we've got a fair bit of traffic noise behind us uh, Monday morning and all that. What have we got? We got 1.57 volts, 0 0.26 amps. Now what I'm finding is at night time we're going down lower in amps, and then during the day again, especially yesterday, it went back up to 0 0.44 amps. I'm assuming that's got something to do with either the heat of this device or the inaccuracy of this device, or the heat, cold sort of resistance thing happening within the batteries. So I think at 48 hours, um, at what, uh, four, 0.45 amps, we would be putting in about 20 amp hours into this batteries over the last two days. Um, so at 20 amp hours, that should be a reasonable result to see if this battery is going to hold a charge or not. There's no use going on for weeks with this. So let's turn this off. <coughs> we'll grab the multimeter first. Turn that on. There we go. Turn that on. And we'll turn this off. Oh, that's not a good look. Starting to drop down instantly and relatively quickly. Who expected that result? Who thinks it's going to go all the way to zero? Well, Chibas, I forgot the old multimeter would time out. So it's about 2 0.27 volts. Uh, it's dropping fast. It's been about 25 minutes, unfortunately. So it's not the result I wanted, but it is the result I expected. Those batteries are never going to hold any charge ever again, I don't think. Around eight hours since I disconnected it all, uh, brought it all inside, and we have 0 0.02 volts. This battery is dead, and so is the other one, I should imagine. If there's any other tests you want me to throw at it, let me know. Be sure to smash that like button, because I can't do it without you. And I'll see you on the next one.